Hello everyone, recently I saw a tweet thread with people arguing about whether hydrolocks or nuclear systems are better or whether nuclear systems are worth it, that is nuclear thermal rocket systems or NTR, and they were arguing with spreadsheets. The problem with spreadsheets is you can put whatever numbers you want into them to make the argument that you want work out. And Kerbal Space Program gives us a somewhat more rigorous way to test these things instead of using spreadsheets. Spreadsheets were traditional before Kerbal Space Program of Realism Overhaul, but now we have this. So I would like to check out the answer to this question. I may, might have done this years ago, but that video is probably buried in the recesses of YouTube not to be seen again. So oh, the setup I have here is this is a 45 ton payload. And you know, the the extra bits are going to be counted into the payload. That's the instrumentation. Actually, we do have a little instrument unit on top. But the RCS system, because you could put the same RCS system on the Hydrolox as the NTR. You could have a Hydrolox RCS system on the NTR if you wanted to. So I'm just going to abstract that out into the payload. And uh, power systems, though that's complicated if your nuclear system actually produces power. That would make it a bimodal nuclear thermal rocket system, but we're going to assume not bimodal for now, and really the solar panels to generate the power probably aren't going to be too much, unless you're using ions, which uh, ion electric people, yes, I know your ISPs are really high, your efficiency is very good, we're setting you aside for now, okay? Uh, that's a whole other business. Nuclear NTR is, is a different thing, and actually something that I like a lot better than pure NTR. But let's talk about nuclear systems first and so we're going to have a tank here at 8.4 meters that's the diameter of SLS and we're pushing 45 tons and we want a nuclear engine I'm gonna pick the nuclear engine that was definitely developed and we are going to get its stats so we've got the Nerva here we've got two Nervas we've got Nerva NRX and Nerva XE Prime uh, I don't think it's gonna matter. This has a little bit more thrust. This has a little bit more efficiency. Uh, we're gonna, for the sake of the nuclear people, go with the better efficiency. We note that the rate of burn time is a whole hour, so let's keep that in mind. Let's start off with one, but we might need more. It only has 239 kilonewtons of thrust. That's gotta become important. And I'm going to remove tanks. And for some reason, it just doesn't give me the hydrogen loadout for this, but I can just put hydrogen like that. Now, it's very important how much we want out of this when we're talking about which one is more efficient. Uh, whatever engine you're looking at, the most efficient stage is just taking the exhaust velocity. And the exhaust velocity is roughly 10 times the ISP. It's really 9.81 or whatever. But uh, so really for a nuclear stage, the optimal delta V that you get out of this is 8,980. So, and then for the Hydrolox engines, they only get about 400 something seconds of ISP in efficiency. So we're expecting 4,000 for them. And that's gotta become late, uh, important later as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go with 8,000. Now, the reason I'm going for 8,000 is not to give the nuclear engine a benefit, but because normally when we're talking about these systems, we're looking at two mission plans. One mission plan is to go to the moon, capture around the moon, break orbit around the moon, and then come back to Earth into a tight orbit. It takes 3,200 to go to the moon, 800 to capture around the moon, 800 to break orbit from the moon, and 3,200 to capture into a tight orbit again around Earth so that it can refuel. So if you're using a reusable stage that goes back and forth between Earth and the moon, you need 8,000. Uh, for Mars, you need 4,000 to transfer to Mars if you're on a good sort of situation that NASA has figured out for you instead of the way I normally go, which takes 4,300 half the time. But 4,000 to go to Mars, 2,000 to capture, 2,000 to come back to Earth, but then then you need to figure out how to come back to low Earth orbit. Um, that's, that we're leaving that aside. We're just gonna go off of the Earth-Moon thing. Uh, but really the Mars thing takes more than 8,000, but that uh, really would put the Hydrolox to more of a disadvantage maybe. But anyway, let's just go with 8,000 because it's a nice round, nice round number. But for Mars, we could argue 9,000 would be nice. So, I'm sizing this to 8,000. 
but we're getting to burn times that are not acceptable. Now, I wouldn't be doing the whole all of this 8,000 at the same time, right? The longest burn would be 4,000, maybe. So, but still, we're talking about like an hour for that 4,000. So, let's put three engines, but then we lose delta V. And now you're starting to see why I decided that making SLS into a wet workshop and using its big hydrogen tank would be a good idea for an NTR because you end up with a very SLS core length tank. Okay, that's 8,000 and a 42 minute burn time. I think that would be acceptable. So we're not gonna have a fourth engine right now in order to do half of that, half of the Delta V. We're talking about about uh, 26 minutes. So this setup right now with 8,000 meters per second is 346 tons. And that's with 100 MLI layers. I don't know what kind of installation you want to go with. Now we're using the basic tank, tank integral structure aluminum. Uh, different tanks will benefit the NTR system more. Uh, we can see, for instance, this copper one uh, aluminum copper 332 and that gives more delta V so we could cut it down here and this is why on the spreadsheets you can have a lot of fudge factor so now it's 291 or if you want to have aluminum lithium So the reality with MTRs versus hydrolocks really depends on what kind of tank you have available. If you've got aluminum lithium and you can build those to great size, and then you can have 282. But then if you have basic aluminum, we have 346. So that's a pretty wide difference. And of that, the mass of the engines is 30 tons, so it's significant. Now let's talk about the Hydrolox. So I'm going to put fairly optimistic Hydrolox engines. These are my own SE2040Vs. They have a, the, spa, the, same, the same specific impulse as the best Hydrolox engines available. 463 is basically top end, and yet they have very good thrust, 361 kilonewtons. So I don't think Hydrolox people can argue too much against this. I'll start with one. So I know we're going to need more than that. Okay, we'll start with the aluminum. But thanks to the density of oxygen, we don't need nearly as large a tank. But that burn time is not acceptable, so I'm going to put a few more. And Hydrolox engines can't burn for as long as an NTR can. 19 minutes would be acceptable though. So there's our 8,000 and we see that the Hydrolox takes 479 tons. So how can anybody say that the Hydrolox system is even comparable to the, the NTR system? The NTR system is obviously better. It was going from 282 to uh, 450 something or whatever. Uh, but sorry, I'm not being very accurate, but you'll, you'll see what I'm getting at in a sec. Well, that's because we're not using the Hydrolox systems as efficiently as they ought to. Remember I said that for Hydrolox, or for any engine, the optimal would be with their vacuum specific impulse times 10, let's say. So we need stages of 4,630, not 8,000. So if you make stages of 4,630, Let's start with a stage of one here. Let's say 4,000 and 4,000. Uh, technically, another principle of proper staging is if you have stages with the same specific impulse, they should have the same delta V provided. So that's a 4,000. Okay, well, that reads 8,000 altogether once the rounding is taken into consideration. And what we see here is that, well, you get 353, which is not too much different from the nuclear engine. 
and it might be a little bit more but does that really make the nuclear side worth it nuclear is after all nuclear it's got a lot more hassle we'll have to think about radiators and protection and all that sort of thing but the nerva does include its own shielding by the way uh so yeah that's a lot more hassle and of course the if it's a crewed vehicle the crew cabin will have to be shielded from radiation as well because uh, even for the hydrolock system because of the sun and solar flares and stuff like that but anyway we'll set that aside for now yeah why would you use the nuclear system then if this is only 353 tons well technically it's more fuel if you have to refuel it this is more fuel because the engines weigh less right they're no longer 30 tons they're actually uh, maybe a couple of tons so a little bit more fuel to refuel but the issue here is that you're going to be dumping this stage right this stage is derelict and not reusable so if you want a reusable system that's going to come back for refueling this is not doable you're going to have to go with the one that, that takes more than 400 tons so that's an issue so the upshot is you get more reusability from the nuclear system and it's probably going to be easier to refuel uh, you're going to lose this stage if you stage it optimally or if you decide to try to get 8,000 from a single stage this is definitely going to be weighing more no matter what you do uh, so that is the issue and if you can use the nicer tanks let's see what this is with the nicer tanks with nicer tanks the nuclear system was 282 and this one is 409 so but then the nuclear system is nuclear, and nuclear is a big hassle. So is it really worth it? Well, if the nuclear system is bimodal and provides you with electric, uh, electric supply, then that could be nice, especially if you're talking about beyond Mars, because your solar panels, if you're going to try to use solar panels to generate power, are not going to be useful to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, etc. And in that case, your hydrolock system is going to be carrying probably a nuclear reactor of some kind too. And, and then the whole fact that this one's nuclear and this one isn't, isn't going to be an issue. And then you might as well just go nuclear, right? Uh, so we talked about Moon and Mars, but really one of the nicer aspects of the nuclear system is using it out into the outer planets, where also hydrogen is easy to get. Uh, water for the hydrolock system, because you take the water and break it into hydrogen and oxygen, uh, is also available, but it's not quite as easy to get as the hydrogen is. So that's an, that's an option with the nuclear system. And actually the 8000 would be good enough to transfer to Jupiter and capture around it. So that's another application of something with 8000 meters per second. If you're not going to ask as much from the system, hydrolocks is going to be progressively better. Uh, so if you're not going to get close to the optimal with the nuclear system and uh, you are going getting closer to where the hydrolox is optimal, you no longer need a second stage to start matching up with it. So the less you need, the more hydrolox is better. The more you need, the more the nuclear system is better. So that's how it all shakes up and so if you're going to analyze this with spreadsheets you can plug whatever numbers you want you can decide oh well I'm going to shade the delta V a little bit differently oh I'm going to make the tankage mass a little bit different oh I'm going to give the advantage of staging to the hydrolox um, there's all these things that you can play around with or for the nuclear people you can say you gotta deny the uh, possibility of having a second stage with the hydrolox but then again, there's an argument for that because it hurts reusability. But there are all these factors that if you take it into Kerbal Space Program and just try to build a rocket, you'll very quickly encounter all these things and realize what the issues are. So anyway, that's a discussion of Hydrolox versus nuclear thermal rocket systems. There's much more to say. For instance, if we throw in ion engines into the mix, and we have a nuclear engine that can supply power to the ions that improves the efficiency quite a lot and that's generally my preferred system uh, for a lot of applications but for now thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time